Patricia Cornwith, Patricia Cornwith. Patricia Highsmith meets Patricia Cornwell, and we're gonna call her Patricia Cornwith. It's a haunting story that gripped me instantly. Oh, that's somebody's review of it. It sounds like super dark and messed up, so. Bing, 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 bing. I feel like this one's gonna go. I think, actually, I think this might be the one and her 13-year-old granddaughter. Granddaughter, granddaughter. I have never had a New York accent, you guys, and every once in a while it flips out and I don't know why that is. There's a lot of books on the shelf, so maybe you wanna be prepared to have a drink and a snack for this video. Hi everybody, it's Audrey, and welcome back to Chapter and Converse. So the shelf tour on haul, it's really just a tour, continues, and we're doing shelf number eight today. So, that one up there, already emptied it. And there's a lot of books because this was like a double decker kind of a situation. So I'm gonna try and talk as fast as humanly possible and not linger on the books. And we will see if there's anything in here that needs to get moved on out. So if you guys follow me, you know I organize my bookshelf by color. So it's gonna be all sorts of types of books mixed in together. And the odds of me finding something I want on haul, I feel like are pretty slim based on how this is going, but we're gonna just dive into it. So first book is Big Little Lies by Leanne Moriarty. I loved this book. I actually originally had the ebook and then I found this at a library sale. It's kind of shimmery and it's in pristine condition. I think I paid two bucks for it and I couldn't be happier about it. Love this book. Definitely one that I want to reread and the HBO adaptation is amazing. Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell. I loved this one too. So I have talked about this before. I was a huge Lisa Jewell fan when she was writing contemporaries, kind of got away from it. And then this was the first book of hers that I saw when she was into mysteries and I just snagged it, loved it. Again, another stunning cover. It's definitely slow burn. It's more of a character study than like a real mystery. Cause I feel like a lot of people figured out what was going on in it, but I love her writing. I love her characters. The cover is everything. Big fan. The next book, this is an arc I got. So this is What Rose Forgot by Nevada Barr. I haven't read this. I got this at Thriller Fest a couple of years ago when I was volunteering there. It's some kind of mystery. It says what she forgot is frightening. What she remembers is deadly. Rose wakes up in a nursing home. She doesn't know how she got there and she wants to get out. So her sister, her granddaughter, and her granddaughter's friend help her to piece together the fragments of her life and it says that someone out there seems determined to kill Rose and they're holding all the cards. So I've never read a Nevada Bar book, but I'm keeping this one because I want to read it. I will also mention that the clouds are parting and I'm getting sun, so I'm sorry if the light's gonna keep switching, but we're just gonna roll with it. The next book I also got at that same Thriller Fest that I was volunteering at, and it's A Nearly Normal Family by M.T. Edwardson. And I totally was like dying to read this and then I didn't read it because I'm a horrible human being, but I'm excited to read this one. So this is the shocking murder accusation that tests a nearly normal family, psychological thriller. I've heard great things about this book. Keeping it, going to read it. Next up is Unbecoming by Rebecca Sherm. I don't actually know what this one's about, but another great cover. I have to say, I'm doing well on the covers. This was a thousand percent like a back in the day book outlet purchase. So I don't even know what this book is about. It says the first lie Grace had told Hannah was her name. So it says Unbecoming reinvents the heist plot, this time from a woman's point of view. The novel is a truly brilliant debut with echoes of classics from Hitchcock and Highsmith, but written with the subtlety and precision of the best contemporary fiction. So I'm keeping it because I'm intrigued by it. I also love the cover. Let me know if anybody's read that one. Keeping in the Patricia Cornwell series, this is Scarpetta. You guys, <laughs> this is like, I haven't read this one yet. Oh, how fun is this? Maybe you should open your books. Psychiatric Hospital. What a great inside cover this one's got. But this is who knows what number in the bazillion book series. It's like 500 pages and someday I will reread the series and get to that. I'm only like three books into the reread. 
book I read and loved, Lore by Alexandra Bracken. I read this earlier this year. This is like Hunger Games with Greek mythology. I just loved everything about this book. I can't wait to reread this one too. I didn't see this coming from a mile away and I fell so in love with it. Highly, highly, highly recommend it. So well done. Next book is Lied to Me by J.T. Ellison. This is the first J.T. Ellison I read and totally loved this one too. This is, I would say has Gone Girl vibes in the sense that you have a married couple, the wife goes missing, the husband becomes the obvious suspect, and it's the investigation of what could have happened to his wife. I really enjoyed this. This got me hooked on J.T. Ellison, and I've read a few of her books at this point, but I still feel like, I would say this one's my favorite of them all, so if you haven't read her, I think that's a great place to start not part of a series, so it's an easy one to dip right into. Next book is Sophie Hanna, writing as Agatha Christie in Closed Casket. So Sophie Hanna has the rights to sort of pick up the series, continue Poirot's adventures, so to speak. So I read this a long time ago when it came out and I really enjoyed it. And it very much reads like an Agatha Christie. We've got a map, very Christie-ish in it and I really liked it. I have the second book in the series too, which I think is in this pile. I haven't gone further than that, but I thought they were really well done. I think she's a great writer. I haven't written or haven't read anything that she wrote as Sophie Hanna. And then I actually feel like this might be the one in one of her books because she knew AJ Finn slash Dan Mallory and sort of all his ridiculous hijinks that he was up to in the publishing industry. And she modeled a character sort of after him. And it might be in this book, not in a flattering way, mind you, which makes me love it even more. So next up is another one I haven't read and it's called The Glass Forest by Cynthia Swanson. I don't know if anybody's read this. Definitely another book outlet binge buy from a hundred years ago atmospheric unsettling razor sharp edges atmosphere suspense multi-generational saga i don't even know has anybody read this one mm. i feel like i am just sort of obsessed with the cover of this but i don't know about the book i'm going to put this one aside to look a little bit more into it because i'm not sure if that's just i'm not really huge on like multi-generational things unless there's like a whole bunch of dead people so we'll see what happens there Next book I did read, this is Behind Her Eyes by Sarah Pinborough. Like I hate to shade, but I hate this cover. But I really enjoyed this book. I was not spoiled for this. I know the ending is very divisive with people. I had fun with it. I have yet to find another Sarah Pinborough book that I enjoy as much. I read her YA book 13 minutes, but other than that, I don't know, that might be a one and done for me, but I did very much enjoy that book. Have not seen the adaptation on it. Two more Patricia Cornwell's. So we have Unnatural Exposure and then we have Trace. These are all part of the K Scarpetta series. I was gonna say Bailey Wagons, that's the K White series. So again, these are just all part of all part of a series. I have read some of them, but not all of them. I did read Trace because they're pages that are dog eared. I hate to say I don't remember what a lot of them are about, but we're talking nineties, early two thousands, friends. Okay, more series. We have Linda Fairstein's uh, Alexandra Cooper series. This is Terminal City. This one takes place in Grand Central, or Grand Central is sort of like the key cornerstone to it. So every one of her books has a New York landmark in it. Also, if you guys follow me on Instagram, you will have seen a very similar photo that I posted the other day because I went back to work. And when you walk out of Grand Central and cross the street, that's what you see. And then yet another, oh, there's something inside. Another K Scarpetta, Patricia Cornwell. I met her. This is way, 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 way back in the day. Time to date myself, my friends, but that's okay. We're all friends here. This is from New York Times Art and Leisure Weekend, 2006. I remember going to this and just being blown away by being able to go to an event and seeing these authors that I love to pieces and you see them in person and you listen to them talk about their books and it was Patricia Cornwell and Scott Turow and then they would sign your book. I'm not going to show you that because it has my full name on it for the tickets, my ticket stub from that event, but such good memories. It was one of like the first like big things I did when I moved back to New York. 
Next book, which I also totally loved and I've talked about on here before, is All the Missing Girls by Megan Miranda. This is the first book by her that I read. It got me totally hooked on her. This is a thousand percent a book I want to read again. This is written slash told backwards, which is incredible. You've got mysteries in the past, mysteries in the present, the reluctant return home. It's got all the tropes that I love and another beautiful cover too. I feel like I need to do a beautiful cover video. But if you have not read her yet, highly, highly, highly recommend. She's also a very interesting author to listen to if you're interested in hearing about craft and storytelling and writing advice. She's another great one. Okay, next book, I haven't read this one yet. This is CJ Tudor's The Hiding Place. I have read The Chalk Man and The Other People. I haven't read this one yet. I know this one is also kind of loosely Stephen King-ish, wink, wink, nod, nod, I think, but I, I think to Pet Cemetery, but I'm not even 100% sure, but I feel like it's Pet Cemetery. So this is like Joe's reluctant return home. His sister went missing and I think she came back and she wasn't quite the same, but I really enjoy CJ Tudor's writing. So I'm excited to read this one. And then I'm really excited to pick up the Burning Girls also. I just honestly just haven't done it yet, but I will. Okay, a couple more books that I have read. Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng. I really liked this book. I feel like it was sort of falsely advertised as a mystery. It's really not, it's really a family, not even saga is not the right word. It's really about the dynamics of a family and the daughter in the family is dead, but it's not like a hardcore police investigation what happened, but it's sort of, it's told sort of the before and after and how her death has impacted her family and what could have possibly led to her death. So it begins in the 1970s and it's a Chinese American family living in small town Ohio. And I really enjoyed this one. So I haven't read Little Fires Everywhere yet, but I liked this one. I feel like it doesn't get as much love as Little Fires, but I thought it was good. So the next book I totally loved, It's Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins. I thought this was great. I, I read it like right when it came out into paperback, I picked this one up. I remember people talking about it big time and I totally was sucked into it. This is a thousand percent a book I wanna read again. I thought it was really well done. I was not a huge fan of the movie, even though I loved a lot of the actors in it. And why am I blanking on Emily? What's her name? Justin Throw is in it. Why am I blanking on her name? Married to John Krasinski, she was in Devil Wears Prada. She's so good, she's so good, but I just, I thought this was great. And then, oh, um, for people who think I'm a monster for dog earring, I also write in my books. So this is a book that I a thousand percent read when I was on the train. And when I get ideas about stories or lines or things, um, this was a book I was writing years ago and I just wrote in the back because that's what I do. Here's the other Sophie Hanna Poirot book. So this was the first one I think that she wrote, and I don't know if she's up to maybe like four of them now, but I will 100% read this. Like I said, it's, it's her sort of writing as Agatha Christie and continuing the story of Poirot, and I'm pretty sure this was the first one she did. This one came out in 2014, but yep, I'm a fan, so I'll read that one. And then the next book, I've talked about this one on here before, but I haven't read it yet. And it's Find You in the Dark by Nathan Ripley. So this is like a guy who sort of like secretly helps solve unsolved murders and serial killers. So like he'll figure out who it is and then he'll kind of anon anonymously tip off the police so that they can catch the killer. And then I think like something happens where then they think this guy isn't just helping, but he's actually a murderer. I feel like I've heard good things about it, but I'm curious about this one. So I'm not getting rid of this one yet because it sounds like super dark and messed up. So bing, 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 bing. Okay, so here's a Marion Keys book that I never finished, I'm guessing, because I've got the cover in it. So this is Sushi for Beginners. I don't remember what this one's about. I don't even know why I'm attempting to save a page because I probably did that. 10 years ago. Yeah, I fully like read the first half because the first half is dog-eared and then I stopped. So I will get back to this one. This looks like it's set in a magazine. I just love her. She's such a great writer. I need to go back. I say it every time, read more of her books. <sighs> the Romantics, I love this book. I've reread this one a bunch of times. The movie is 
fantastic Katie Holmes, Adam Brody, Josh Dumel, Alan Ackerman, Thora Birch. So, so good. This is a group of friends from college and then they reunite 10 years later for a wedding weekend and it's all their secrets and their history and sort of this incestuous friendship with everyone sort of dating each other and everything they get into and it's it really reminds me of my group of friends from college and i just loved it emily giffen's love the one you're with this is probably maybe her fourth or fifth book i totally enjoyed this one too so she is married and then she runs into kind of the one who got away and sort of the bad boy and then it becomes you know love the one you're with obviously and inside this one again i'm not going to show you because my full name is on it but it is my jet blue airways pass from may 2008 when i went to vegas with a friend of mine so i don't know if anybody else keeps little mementos inside their books so you know when you were reading them but yep that was a vegas book not sure how much of it i read in vegas but i probably read it at least on the plane there because it was probably the only time that i was able to do anything remotely human while i was there the next book i love this one too this is time of my life by allison winscotch this is the first book of hers that i read and i loved it i was such see I, you guys i swear i wasn't always reading dark books there's definitely a contemporary streak to me this is about a woman named Jillian and she kind of has like the perfect life and the perfect everything and she's married, she's got the kid, but then she like wakes up in her past with the knowledge of her present. So she gets to kind of go back in time and it says, you know, kind of like the what if before her daughter was born, before she got married. She's back in her post-grad school Ikea furnished Manhattan apartment back in her fast-paced job with the ad agency and she's still with Jackson, the ex-boyfriend and the star of her What If Fantasies. I need to read this one again too. I loved this book and who hasn't dreamed about going back in time with what you know now then and like doing it all over again and perhaps doing it right? Or does everything work out the way it's supposed to? Therein lies the question. Ah, another book I loved, His and Hers by Alice Feeney. Multiple points of view, dark and messed up people doing dark and messed up things. I am obsessed with this book. I can't wait for Rock, Paper, Scissors to come out this year. This was her book from last year. If you haven't read it, you must. It's murders, it's reluctant return home. It's a TV reporter who's investigating it. It's the cop who's on the case. Brilliant. And then we have Unhinged by Kalia Reed. I haven't read this. I feel like this was part of a series. Hold your breath and count to 10. Soon it will be over before it ever began. So we have Victoria Donovan. She's in a mental institution. Once upon a time, her life was like a fantasy. Seems like she's in a safe place, but it sounds like there's messed up stuff happening. Um, I feel like it's dark and mysterious. I'm not sure where I heard about this one. This is from 2006. Yes, so she wrote another book called Unravel which I think you're supposed to read before you read this one. And I don't have Unravel. Anyone? Let me know. This is like a shelf of love. My Lovely Wife by Samantha Downing. Loved this book. This is one of those books where I actually like bought it, picked it up immediately and read it. And I absolutely loved it. She's an autobi author for me. This is the married couple in the burbs with the t with the the teenagers and to spice things up they murder people so they are serial killer couple and believe it or not something kind of goes horribly wrong a good girl's guide to murder by holly jackson i love 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 this book this is the first in the series book number three is coming out I think august in the uk and september in the us i read this then i did the audiobook of it so well done it is a girl named pip and she is looking into this murder mystery that happened in her town five years ago her best friend's older sister's friend was murdered there's just it's it's brilliant it's brilliant and then girls with sharp sticks by suzanne young i really enjoyed this book too this is definitely, I like, this was out of my comfort zone when I read it. There's like some sci-fi vibes to it, but I really wound up loving it. 
and it's about this group of girls who are sort of in this like academy finishing school to make them the perfect little stepford wife and there's definitely something messed up going on there there's a sequel to it girls with razor hearts which i haven't read yet but i very much enjoyed that book uh some love for my ruth ware turn of the key death of mrs westaway loved them both uh i just uh, so dark and atmospheric so well done this is the one where i got to see her and meet her at my barnes and noble she was giving out tarot cards because tarot plays a part in this book and i'm just a huge fan of hers i will auto buy everything love me a signature these are like the prized possessions as you guys know so i'm obviously not getting rid of anything here and then turn of the key which was like the spin on turn of the screw i feel like i saw just recently that this is being turned into a movie tv show hbo max miniseries one of those things and when i read this i when i reviewed this i said how the relationship between the gardener and rowan who's the nanny reminded me of offred and the character that max Mangala plays in handmaid's tale whose name is escaping me at the moment and i feel like he is either starring in or producing this and it like blew my mind like am i psychic Next book, I haven't read this one yet, but this is Rat Saw God by Rob Thomas. So he is the creator of Veronica Mars. This is a book he wrote before then. And if you guys are Veronica Mars fans, you know the episode called Rats Called God. So I think it's just supposed to be sort of coming of age. It's, I don't know, I think it's from a boys. Yeah, from Steve York. Perfect GPA, tight circle of friends, and a girl he loved. Now he's flunking stoned and brokenhearted. The only way he'll graduate is if he writes a 100-page paper explaining how he got from point A to point B. And in telling the story, Steve will find his way back to who he wants to be. So I love Veronica Mars. I need to read that book. And then Defending Jacob by William Landay. I loved this book too. The Apple TV Plus series of this is phenomenal. And I also just saw that it's going to be turned into, I think, like a DVD and maybe you can buy it rather than having to have apple tv but it was so well done chris evans is in it and this book was really great this is definitely like dark and messed up family stuff the da's son is accused of murdering one of his classmates and it's set outside of boston and it's beautifully shot on tv it's beautifully told in the book highly recommend the book and then watch the show but the show definitely does it justice Okay, so it's funny that I guess a lot of authors just sort of have the same color books, so they're together. So I have The Guest List by Lucy Foley and The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley. I definitely loved Hunting Party more. This is friends from Oxford get together every year on New Year's Eve. This is like 10 years after they graduate. S stuck in the snow, somebody dies, and it is all their secrets. This is primo dark and messed up people doing dark and messed up things. I read this one first and then a couple months later I read The Guest List or maybe two months later. So this is Destination Wedding Gone Horribly Wrong and somebody dies and it's a group of friends with secrets. And I talked about this when I was talking about Taylor Adams' Hairpin Bridge. Hairpin Bridge I very much enjoyed. I very much enjoyed No Exit but they feel formulaic to me so it's the same vibe. Same thing here. Like it, if I had read this first, maybe I would have a different feeling about it, but it's definitely multiple points of view. You know on page one, someone's dead. You go back in time to like the beginning of the weekend to find out what happens. So I'll be curious with her next book. I hope she breaks from that formula. I enjoy these books, but I would like to see something a little bit different because this sort of felt not predictable in the sense of like, I knew exactly who did it, but I knew what was coming in a lot of ways and felt like a little bit more hip to some of the red herrings and things like that. Next book is The Vanishing Season and this is by Joanna Schaffenhausen. So I read this, I think like towards the end of last year and this is the first in a series. I really enjoyed it. I do have, I wanna say books two and three in the series. Then this is about a detective and she lives outside of Austin. When she was a child, she actually escaped a kidnapper with the help of an FBI agent. And then 
some stuff goes down in present day, she's a grown adult, the FBI agent winds up coming to help her consult on a case. And then I think going forward, it's the two of them working on cases together. But I really liked the writing. I liked the mystery. I liked the relationship between the two of them. And I thought it was very well done. Next up is another book that I've read. This is The Shadow Friend by Alex North. I loved this one. I've done this before. I know gore just everyone could take a hint from whoever designed this book. This is a little bit mystery, a little bit supernatural, a little bit ghosty. You've got mysteries in the past, mysteries in the present. You've got a very gruesome murder that opens up this book. So just be ready for it. And I really liked it. So it says one of you died, one disappeared. You can't, you can't run forever. There's definitely a lot about grief in this book. I cried when I read this book and not because I was scared, but I thought it was great. I have The Whisper Man. I haven't read it yet, but I will. But I loved this. And this is the UK cover, if anybody's wondering, because I know it looks different. Okay, we're close to the end here. So the next one is Marion Key's This Charming Man. I did not read this one. And I remember trying to do the audiobook of it and then I wound up DNFing that. And I think I just wasn't in the mood for it. So this is about a guy named Patty and he is Ireland's debonair politician, the quote, John F. Kennedy Jr. of Dublin. So charm and charisma has taken hold of the country and the tabloids, not to mention our four heroines. So this is told from the four different points of view of Lola, Grace, Marnie, and Alicia, and how their love for this one man has shaped their lives. So. I don't remember why I didn't totally connect with this book, but I will not get rid of it and I will go back to it at some stage of the game. Next up is Nothing Good Can Come From This by Christy Coulter. This is a series of short essays. So I did the audiobook of this, I think this was like two years ago, and this is about her journey quitting drinking. And I thought it was a really well done. I, there were parts of this that really resonated with me. And it says, how a decades long feeling of dread and fatigue was really a constant low grade hangover. And just sort of a commentary on just sort of drinking from how prevalent it is from a teenager and everywhere from like yoga classes to book clubs and everything in between. But it's about her sort of confronting her drinking and quitting and her journey in doing that. And I thought it was just really well done. The audiobook is great. She narrates it herself. And I, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I feel like this might be the last in the series that we've touched on already. And this is Sloppy First by Megan McCafferty. And this is the first book in the Jessica Darling series. I loved this. It's so yellow and old. I wanna reread this one too. I keep saying I wanna reread, I wanna reread. But this, she is a high school student and it kind of gave me like my so-called life vibes. And I just absolutely loved it. So there's five books in this series and just, it was so good. It's so good. I just love it so much. The next book is some short essays and I haven't actually read this one and I've had it for a long time. My mom bought me this and it says goodbye to all that writers on loving and leaving New York. I love New York. I have left New York City proper. So this is kind of an homage to a 1967 essay that Joan Didion published called goodbye to all that. And it's about her loving and leaving New York. So this is a collection of 28 writers who take up Didion's literary legacy by sharing their own New York stories. So this is obviously one of those books that you can read an essay and you don't have to read the whole book, but I'm definitely keeping that. And then another Marion Keys, this is like, I feel like all her books are chunkers. This is The Break. And this is another one that I was like, I have to have it and I haven't read it yet because I'm a horrible human being again. So this is Amy and her husband, Hugh, and it says he isn't leaving her. He still loves her. He's just taking a break. So how Ross and Rachel are we getting here? So it says, yes, it's a midlife crisis, but let's be clear. A break isn't a breakup yet. However, for Amy, it's enough to send her along with her extended family of gossips, misfits, and troublemakers teetering over the edge. So I guess they go on a break for six months and she does too. So when he returns, will he be the same man she married and will she be the same woman? So this is kind of reminiscent of, I was looking for that Taylor Jenkins Reid book, After I Do, kind of reminds me of that. Love her, not getting rid of it. And then the last book on this shelf, which I'm a bajillion percent not getting rid of, is Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. So I loved this book. 
freaked me out in some places. I will never watch The Sound of Music the same again. And I thought it was brilliant. I read this, I think, in like a 48 hour time period. And you guys know, he's an autobi author for me. He is one of my most favorite authors in the universe. I ordered this from Murder Books, which is, even though I've never been to Texas, one of my favorite bookstores. They do such great things. And I got a personalized copy as part of the gig. So, could I end on a bigger high note? I think not. No lie, I am like proud of myself that I have a shelf of books that I have read almost all of or intend to read because they're part of series that I love. And I'm feeling like super excited about this shelf. I'm like reminded of how much I love some of these authors. So I'll look into this one. I'm feeling like it might go. If anybody's read it, let me know. Or let me know whatever you want to let me know because that's cool too. But thanks for watching. More in the tour. We are we're home stretching on this shelf and we'll just see what happens from there. But thanks guys for watching. I know this was a long one and I will see you in another video soon. Bye everybody.